Hello and welcome to the Abaco series on nano indentation. This video will show us going through the steps necessary to get viable data from nano indentation, from instrument setup and calibration to actually indenting into a sample. This is our instrument. It has a 2-axis translation stage, an optical microscope that can go up to 220x, a piezoelectric scanning device, and a three-plate capacitive transducer. Those last two make up the indenter column. The indenter tip is attached underneath the transducer and can be removed and replaced with a different one when necessary. Replacing a tip simply involves screwing the tip onto the center plate of the transducer. It's a quick and simple process, but requires a lot of care, as rough handling can damage either the tip or the transducer. To calibrate the nano indenter, we need to do a couple of things. First, we need to calibrate the transducer. Next, we need to calibrate the optics of the instrument. Finally, we need to calibrate the tip area function. Normally, it would take about 15 minutes for those first two and up to a couple of hours for the last. But I've gone ahead and done all that already, so we can get right to doing an indentation. In order to perform an indentation, we first have to find the surface of our sample. In order to do this, we perform a quick approach. This is a procedure in which the instrument quickly approaches the sample surface. It can usually cause some damage to the sample surface, especially in the case of soft materials, but such damage is usually pretty minimal and can typically be placed in an unimportant area. Now that we've performed the quick approach, we can pick a different area that we're actually interested in and approach the surface more slowly without causing any damage. Now we're finally in contact with the sample surface and are ready to make indents. Well, almost. We, it, we could perform an indent right now, but we would run into a couple of issues. First, we've been moving the sample stage around a lot, we've been moving the indenter column up and down, and that creates a lot of heat, which, while indenting on the nanoscale, that thermal expansion from that heat can cause a number of issues. Second, we know we're in contact with the surface, but we don't actually know what that surface looks like. So, we're going to take a couple minutes to let our instrument's in-situ scanning probe microscope scan the surface and let us know what it looks like, while at the same time letting a lot of that heat dissipate. If you look in the top right corner, you can see the SPM image of the sample. It's a little rough, about 60 nanometers peak peak roughness, but it should be okay for our purposes. Now that we're ready to indent, I'm going to go ahead and start the indentation process. Just so you know, the sample I chose for this test is a piece of 430 stainless steel. It has a nominal Young's modulus value of about 200 gigapascals. So the reduced modulus value we should get for this test is, should be around 180 gigapascal, plus or minus about 5% because of that surface roughness. If you look in the upper right corner, you can see the reduced modulus value that we got for this test. That's about 177, which is pretty close to what we were expecting. That's it for this video. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions for us, please don't hesitate to ask, either in the comment box below or via our contact information on our website. Additionally, if you're interested in nanomechanical lab services or consultation, please give us a call. We'd love to hear from you.